to the Reed Green Coliseum in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. It's Metro Conference Basketball on Prime Network as the VCU Rams take on the Golden Eagles of Southern Mississippi. And Green Coliseum is a tough place to play. Six and one for USM. And they'll try to win another one in Metro Conference action. Hello, everyone. I'm Don Russell, along with John Albright. And, John, both of these teams right now in the middle of the Metro Conference race at two and three. But you played in this league. You've been an analyst around the league. Nothing's ever over. These two teams will be back. Well, Don, both these teams, they got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And that combination sometimes produces unusual effects. Although one of them will lose tonight. One of these two teams will upset somebody before the league race is over. We have two of the best forwards not only in the metro conference but in the nation the first one for vcu is kind of an unknown but he's a good one around the league kendrick warren but the sports information department at vcu trying to do something about that the warren report they're sending out information everybody media wise across the country comparing kendrick warren with places like stacy ogman at this point in his career so far his on the court results have not disappointed anybody well a guy that was an unknown a few years ago in this league but not now he's known by all the professional scouts especially his senior, Clarence Weatherspoon. What a great work ethic. I think that's the thing that's most impressive about the Spoon. Preseason All-American, rightfully so. He just comes to play hard every single day, and he is a legitimate big-time player. Well, let's put the game under the microscope. How about your winning ways? Well, if you look at the winning ways, first of all, for VCU. Close, but in their three Metro losses, two of them by two points. The other, well, one-point loss in overtime. In the game earlier at VCU, if they would just hit 50% from the free throw line, they would have won the game. We talked about Kendrick Warren. He's got to neutralize what Weatherspoon does on offense. Now, if you look at Southern Miss, Spoonful, he's got a chance to do what no Metro player has ever done before. That's win three Player of the Year awards. The thing about them offensively, they can put together big runs to take you out of the game. Turnovers have been one of the problems for MK Turk. His clubs had 94 more turnovers on the year than the opposition, so the guards must do a good job handling the basketball. The Metro Conference Game of the Week on Prime Network is brought to you by General Motors. GM is putting quality on the road. We'll be back with the starting lineups right after this. Back here in Hattiesburg, let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's Metro Conference matchup. Here's the PA announcer, Dave Nichols. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome our Prime Network television audience to Green Coliseum for tonight's game between the USM Golden Eagles and the VCU Rams. And now, let's meet our starting lineups. Starting tonight for Virginia Commonwealth at one guard, a 5'10 sophomore wearing number 12, Rod Ladd. Starting at the other guard, a six foot three senior wearing number 24, Carl Weldon. Starting at center, a six foot eight junior wearing number 40, Sharon Mills. Starting at one forward tonight, a six foot six senior wearing number 11, Eric Atkins. And starting at the other forward, a six foot eight sophomore wearing number 23, Kendrick Warren. Now let's meet your USM Golden Eagles. Tonight's honorary coach is Dr. William C. Smith of the marketing department representing university contributors to the United Way campaign. And now here are your Golden Eagles. Starting tonight at guard, a six foot two senior wearing number three, Dallas Dale. The other guard, a six foot three junior wearing number 13, Terry Cameron. Starting at center, a six foot eight senior wearing number 42, Joe Courtney. Starting at one forward, a six foot four junior wearing number 21, Ron Rambert. Starting at the other forward, a six foot seven senior wearing number 35, Clarence Weatherspoon. Coach Sonny Smith 
with uh, BCU in his third year with that fine club. 17th year overall. And MK Turn, 16 years here at Southern Mississippi. Metro basketball next on Prime Network. USM and BCU coming up. Well, John, in this series overall, VCU leads 3-1, to one, but the USM win came earlier this season in the Metro. In a dramatic fashion, Ron Rimbert hit a last-second three-point shot to pull it out to in Richmond earlier in the year. Some of the things we'll be watching, uh, be interesting to see the play inside as well, also in the guard spots. Well, inside will be interesting because Southern Mississippi should be much more physical, VCU more of a finesse team inside. As you mentioned, the guards... USM must handle the pressure and not turn the ball over as much as they have been doing. It'll be Clarence Weatherspoon against Sharon Mills and the Golden Eagles of Southern Mississippi. And the first possession of the game, and VCU, as expected, opens in a tough man-to-man. Man-to-man defense. You can watch inside immediately. Corner gets it on the block. Doesn't even look to shoot. But Rembert will, and he hits a three right off the bat, and that is a good sign to MK Turk to see Rembert start off hot. Oh, that's going to loosen it up for Weatherspoon to operate more effectively inside when he wants to. This is Kendrick Warren over Courtney, and we have a 3-2 to two game. It didn't take Warren long to get into the swing of things, did it, Joe? Well, we didn't expect the 45-second shot clock to enter into this game, and so far it hadn't been a factor at all. It can save a little electricity tonight here in Hattiesburg. We're glad to have you along on Prime Network and Metro Conference Basketball. Courtney with the one-hander not there. As long as Mills plays behind Courtney, that shot on the block will be open all night long. Here's Atkins. He's been playing well lately. Didn't get the baby jumper on the baseline. And Spoon will not drop many rebounds out of bounds. He normally grabs that ball like it's a grapefruit. Very unusual for Weatherspoon to lose it because really wasn't contested that much. That is a rare sight to, if you're a Southern Mississippi fan. Southern Miss leads it 3-2. But VCU, the Rams out of Richmond, Virginia, trying to change it. Atkins down low, rejected by Weatherspoon, but it's going to be a goaltending against Clarence. I think that's a good move by Sonny Smith and BC. You go ahead and challenge Weatherspoon. Make him spend some time at the defensive end. Let's watch it. Atkins with the shot. Oh, ball clearly coming down, but it gives you a great idea of the athletic ability that Weatherspoon at 6'7". I think that's a good move by Sonny Smith. Go ahead and challenge him. Make him spend some time at the defensive end. So the Rams have their first lead of the game, and they get the turnover as they strip it from Weatherspoon. And almost stolen back by Rembert, but he saves it into Weldon. Now, this is not a game for the slow of foot in this one. You better get ready. Get your track shoes on, because both these teams are very quick and like to run. Mills from outside. Rebound Warren, and he was there to put it in. Kendrick Warren with four already in the game for VCU. Well, we talked about him having to neutralize, and that's not talking defensively, but his output offensively has got to be pretty close to what Weatherspoon does. Again, he only had 10 points in the loss at Richmond, and he's too valuable to this team to only have 10 points in a game. Weatherspoon comes out and takes it above the free throw line, but we have a whistle in the lane. Atkins, I believe, with a foul. Atkins did get the foul. The first foul on Atkins, the first foul on VCU in the game, so the Golden Eagles will trigger it in, trailing 6-3, to three, just underway. 2-3 zone on the out-of-bounds play. Now, if you're Southern Mississippi, you can't be one-dimensional. Just because Weatherspoon's there, wait till you can get him naturally in the flow. Remember, it's early perimeter shot for MK Turk was a good indication that they can get that outside game going to take some of the pressure off the inside guys. Tom O'Neill, Wally Tanner, and Max Chauvin are officials, and here's another goal 10 as Warren will get credit for the two as Spoon once again rejected it. But here's a concern if you're MK Turk. It's the second time that Warren's gone one-on-one -on -one with Courtney, gone right by him. Again, no doubt about the goal 10. And coming in, this will really show you. Looks like it was almost going up, but it, uh, the goal 10 call. But the problem, Courtney not quick enough to stay with Warren in the open court. So VCU off to a tremendous start on the road in this game, and when you're playing away from home, a good start's very important. Dale for three. Courtney with the rebound, and he backs it in. Strong rebound that time by Joe Courtney. Nobody contested him. He went right back up with it for an easy two. That's a muff. That was not an intentionally lost control of it, so he was not over the bound line, which would have been a turnover. VCU with a three-point lead in the ball. 
Warren has great quickness and instincts. This one partially blocked and knocked out of bounds. Touched last by the Rams, so it belongs to Southern Miss. That's a tough assignment for Joe Courtney, who's ordinarily an inside player, but because Warren can take it out to the 15-foot mark, he's got to extend outside his normal comfort zone defensively. Well, VCU had five players in double figures in the first meeting, but the lowest scoring player was Kendrick Warren. Here's Spoon with a follow away. Atkins had it and lost it as Cameron comes up with it. Rembert for three. And Warren grabs the rebound and took the little walk. Here in Hattiesburg, he gets the travel. Well, that's two straight times that VCU's come up with a rebound only to have turnovers. Don't force a transition if it's not there. Hey, look at Sonny Smith. Got to be one of the funniest coaches <laughs> in all of college basketball. A real delight to be around. If you want a banquet speaker, he is your man. But you know, he's a workaholic. You don't see that side of him, but a very dedicated coach. He believes in having fun. Way up above the rim is Warren as he grabs the rebound. They get Rembert on the Southern Miss foul. And these guys definitely play up above the rim, John. <laughs> well, Rembert's only 6'4". Let's look at it inside. Ball's going to come off. Rembert, it's a uh, 6'4", definitely crashed and picked up the foul. So VCU continues to lead by three, 16-15 left on the clock here in Hattiesburg. And once again, Warren. This time Warren sets up again. He's too quick. you got a quickness problem. He's able to get a shot up and over Courtney before he can establish himself defensively. Warren has eight points. He already alone has outscored Southern Mississippi. He has eight of the ten for the Rams. We're standing around right now by Southern Miss. They need to get some movement. Well, you got sort of a passive 2-3 zone right now that they're not sure whether it's man-to-man -man or zone. Doesn't matter because Weathersburg's going to hit it anyway. You know, John, I think a lot of people are surprised what a good outside shooter he is as well. And Southern Miss is surprised because right. they didn't get back on defense. Well, Atkins and just beat everybody down. Nobody picked him up. That won't be a lot of fun watching the film of that play if you're the defensive guy that has that assignment. Not at all. So Atkins and Warren have combined for all 12 of the VCU points. You need a bucket now is when you got to get Weatherspoon involved down low. Let him operate. And get it out of the set offense. If you're patient, you'll get a shot out of your set offense. Rembert for three off the back of the iron. Cameron with a rebound and... Southern Miss maintains possession, trailing 12 to 7 in the game. Straight man now. Now's where you can get him the ball. When you need a bucket, you got to at least let him touch it. The last couple of times, except for the shot he hit, and before that he hadn't touched the ball. He touches it again and touches nothing but the bottom of the sack. That's, that's a high percentage shot at Metro Games. He's hitting over 60% from the floor. Warren gets it from Weldon, and Weatherspoon gets the miss. And Southern Miss down by three and a chance to tie with a three, but they'll take a two from Rembert. Didn't take long. Southern Miss right back in this. Rembert hits the shot on the break. The VCU lead is one. Don Russell, John Albright, and our Prime Network crew. Glad to have you along from Hattiesburg, Mississippi in the Metro Conference. And it looks like Southern Miss may be showing some zone right here. Got a 3-2 zone right now. And the key against the zone, both offensively and defensively, you got to have movement, both defensively to keep it going. Then offensively, you got to pass the ball. Force that zone to react to you. Glad out of the corner, tries a three that's not there. Rembert a strong rebound, and Dale had it stripped by Ladd. And Ladd will take it all the way and flip it into this guy. Ladd is the smallest number two guard in the country, but he's a real inspirational player for VCU. He's a spark plug, Don, and because of his quickness, he really creates a lot of problems because in the back of your mind, if you don't see him in front of you, where is he? You're always wondering. Now they list him at 5'10", but I stand about 5'8", and we're about the same size. So I think they may be stretching it a bit. Three-pointer not there by Cameron. And the two... Standing players, Warren and Spoon go after it, and the Spoon gets the three. Tom, that's the biggest difference between a senior weather Spoon and a, and a player earlier in the year because now he's got that perimeter shot. Early in his career, he didn't. He's got the all-around game. Is going to make some NBA team a very solid player. He's going to be one of those guys in the NBA that will play as tall as he needs to play. He's also pretty nasty out on the floor, and I mean that in a positive way. Off the floor, he's the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Well, there's no nonsense with Spoon in the middle. 
It's a tie game at 14, but not for long because Ladd hammers the three out of the baseline. Well, Ladd's had an immediate impact the last two trips down. He looked at the steal the time before and then gets a, a shot that VCU desperately needed. He's a guy that stepped in for Carl Weldon when Weldon went down last year with a shoulder injury, and Ladd played most of the year as a true freshman. Courtney with that line drive shot has his second field goal. Again, defensively, VCU is conceding that entry pass down low on the block, choosing not to front it at this point with their man-to-man -man defense. That's the time left of the first half, and the one-point VCU lead. Mills wide open. Warren tries to get the rebound, but Rimbert was there. Not a whole lot of opportunities. One shot done for VCU, and Southern Miss much more active now at the defensive rebounding area. Courtney, who's been a pleasant surprise, hammers that one just to the left of the free throw lane. Well, it's not real pretty in terms of the uh, pure shooting concept because he shoots more of a line drive, but uh, he is effective, and that's all that matters. Courtney is a guy that M.K. Turk says is really beginning to play now like the coaches expected he could. Eagles lead it by one, but not for long. A three by Ladd, and Ladd off to a good start. And that's going to help Kendrick Warren get back involved offensively because you're going to have to stretch that zone out if he continues to be a factor from there. You know, we've gone about nine minutes and really have had no dead ball situations. Both teams taking care of the ball very well, and here's a miss by a miss, and now BCU on the run. Good ball movement inside. Mills and wanted an offensive foul. Didn't get it. Instead, Kendrick Warren with the game. Well, you play until you hear the whistle, and I think Southern Miss expected a foul. I know MK Church certainly did. There was contact, but until the referee stops the play, you got to keep playing. Just like until the buzzer goes off, keep playing. And that's how Southern Miss relaxed. Nobody wants to stop playing in this game. Once again, a Southern Miss turnover. Lad. The tray is short, and River the flat-footed rebound. Up and down we go here in Hattiesburg. Kendrick Warren already has 10 points in the game, and we played just a little less than 10 minutes of the first half. Nearly lost by Rimbert, but picked up outside. There's the spoon with it. Blocked away, and we finally get a whistle and a foul inside. When he gets the ball inside, you cannot stop him with one defensive player. He's too strong, plus he has the ability to alter his shot if he feels the contact and the pressure. But one-on-one, -on -one, when, when he gets in that position, you can't stop him. You just got to hope he misses. Sherrod Mills gets his first foul of the game. That's the second foul on BCU. M.K. Turk comes in with Glenn Wispy, an outstanding, talented 6'9 freshman, and also Bernard Haslett, who played great as a freshman last year, John, but has not been able to find that range this year. Now, Wispy, you mentioned he's the most highly recruited player to ever sign here at Southern Mississippi. Yes, that's even more so than Weatherspoon. We have to give M.K. Turk and his staff credit. They were on uh, Clarence Weatherspoon early on when not a lot of people knew about it. Crawford, Mississippi also... <laughs> Spoon has nine of them. He hits a couple of free throws, and Clarence Weatherspoon knows how to do it. Well, you don't relax. Again, you wait till you hear the whistle, and here's why. Relaxation just for a minute, and Kendrick Warren is going to show you why he's a potential All-American candidate. Well, one of the reasons Dallas Dale is among the nation's leaders in terms of assists is because he's got a pretty good target in Clarence Weatherspoon to dish off. Nice shot. We mentioned he was from Crawford, Mississippi. Another famous player, Jerry Rice, also from Crawford, Mississippi. Metro leaders, where you get to see the top two in the league perform here in the first half and so forth. They have not disappointed. Not at all. And, of course, Clarence Weatherspoon getting the job done for Southern Miss. He faced Henry Williams from UNC Charlotte, and that was a game that Southern Miss had in control here, John. Up by eight points on the verge of really getting that thing going, and you see both these teams shooting extremely well uh, early on uh, here in the first half. But what happened in the Charlotte game is they just couldn't get the ball to spoon late in the contest. Warren tried to get the jam follow, didn't get it, but he draws the foul in the process. Going to be against Glenn Wispy. The freshman gets his first foul. 
So Warren will go to the line. If there is a weakness for Kendrick Warren, it's his free throw shooting job. This is an adventure almost every time he goes to the line. And that's one of the few you really can say that the, the young man needs to improve on. But again, the ironic thing, they only shot 35% in the game earlier between these two teams in Richmond. If they just shoot 50%, they win at home. Well, well nearly 70% is the benchmark you want to see your team shoot ideally. Well, this guy, Dallas Dale, you gave him his numbers in the nation. He is, without a doubt, the leading assist man in the Metro Conference as well. He's also pretty smart. When you got a guy like Weatherspoon, get him the ball a lot. That's exactly right. It's going to make you look good also. You don't need to have your college degree to figure that out, do you? Well, you can always tell your, your kids that someday the good Weatherspoon averaged about 28 points per game. Great steal by Warren. He kicks it to Ladd. Now to McCoy, who checked in. And it's Warren that gets the jam follow. And this guy is off to a 12-point start in this one, John. Well, Don, Southern Mississippi's going to have to figure out where he is. You must block out. VCU too talented to go to the offensive boards. And that's been a repeating uh, problem for them. They have a reach-in foul called against Sonny Miss club blocking out is a small part of the game but an important one let's watch again nobody blocks out vcu with two guys right over the top of joe courtney but it doesn't matter they have a break with 909 left in the first half vcu by four Coming up next, Prime Network brings you live coverage of Pac-10 basketball. Tonight, Arizona State's Lester Neal squares off with Brian Hendrick of California in a battle of the big men. ASU and Cal next on most Prime Network affiliates. Bill Frieder and Lou Campanelli. His Cal's already signed with the nation's elite and Jason Kidd. That'll make uh, the Cal Bears much more productive in a very good Pac-10 league. No question about it. Already been... Uh, some major league action. The big Southern Cal win against UCLA. Of course, now it's all topsy-turvy after last night, huh? Washington State's also got a very good program. Number one, Duke going down. Number two, Oklahoma State. This is Haslett. Can't hit the three-pointer, but hustled after it to keep the live. And finally, Southern Miss comes up with it again. And Rittenberg gets the jam. Good hustle by Ron Redbird, 6'4". We talked about his leaping earlier. That time he finally gets loose for a jam. It's a two-point game. Chris Bauer, 6'3", junior from Fort Walton Beach, checked in during the break. You got a 1-3-1 one, one half-court trap now by Southern Mississippi. First time we've seen this tonight. This is Brower with the ball now. Now, once you beat the trap, you got to look to score because the defense now is at a disadvantage. Make a pay out of it. Attack it. Right now, BCU not looking to attack. They're just looking to survive against it. And that's what the trap tries to do, disorient you. McCoy, and it works. Yep. McCoy missed the baseline jumper. Spoon with the rebound, but Ladd Ashlett too much. Southern Mississippi's done a good job on defense. Well, they're quick and good job. Rembert's finally going to come up with this. Who wants it? Rembert finally does. And then it's a, can you get there in time? The answer, no. Ryan Rembert coming right at you. Rembert has seven points in the game for Southern Miss. The VCU lead is two. What a shot by Warren. Oh, my goodness. They threw it in the area, and he had eyes, literally, John. Well, the that. first thing was a great catch by Warren. I don't know how he got the shot off, much less getting it in. That's a beautiful move by Kendrick Warren. You're watching a 14-point first-half performance by Kendrick Warren. Now, we said he had to have a big game. Uh, he's taking that loud and clear. Only had 10 the entire game earlier at Richmond. So he's already surpassed that total from the first meeting. Ashlett rejected by Warren out of nowhere. But Weatherspoon picks it up. Warren is he's on fire tonight. A point of emphasis that time. I can play defense also. Ashlett wide open. Good pass from Dallas Dale. And Ashlett gets his first two points. And the VCU lead is 26-24. Brower trying to force things a little bit and draws the charge. That time Wisby apparently stepped in to pick up the charge. Six minutes, 58 seconds left in the first half. We're in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. 26-24, Sonny Smith's club with the advantage. Kendrick Warren comes into the game as the second leading scorer in the Metro Conference. He only had 10 in the earlier game between these two. To watch the athletic move, first the catch, that's the key. that's a tough pass. 
and then somehow has the presence of mind to get that up and in. That's an extremely difficult play made look easy by Kendrick Warren, who's got 14 points. And we've got prom night from the band section. <laughs> Tell you what. That'll be something that the Warren Report, the VCU Sports Information Department, will let uh, some of the media know about uh, their next publication. I tell you right now, that man is the main guy at the dance, prom or no prom. Believe me, they have a good time with the pep band here. Last week, I think they were in their uh, tropical uniforms. We've seen pajama night down here already. Let's look at the shooting again. Both teams shooting pretty well. 48% is very acceptable if you're Southern Mississippi and VCU right now, over 50%. MK Turk comes with Avery Thomas, a 6'1 freshman guard out of Jackson, Mississippi, Forest Hill High School. And you got Atkins at 6'6", now he's guarding Weatherspoon. I think if you can get it to Weatherspoon down low, that's a mismatch. Coach Turk's looking for uh, an answer here, and Weldon gets the steal, but yet a foul. I tell you what, VCU has been very alert on defense here for Sonny Smith. Well, you got to wonder when Sonny Smith's luck's going to change. Again, we talked at the top about the, the close uh, losses that he's had. This team could be 15-2 and two if everything in those close teams went the other way. It didn't, but as Sonny Smith told us before the game, hey, it's a matter of time. Normally during the course of a year, uh, things even out. Don't expect him to sit too long over there next to Sonny Smith. Uh, he gets a little breather, but Coach Smith will be very close to number 23 in the goal to send him back in because he needs him in there. Rember, three-pointer. Rebound inside. Wispy short. And Mills has it for the Rams. Well, they get it up the court in a hurry. Ladd out of the corner. And Spoon for a strong rebound. And now the Golden Eagles want to run. Wispy was there and they didn't see. And he wanted it, too. It's a high-risk pass. Maybe a good move not to get it to him because they had a good shot anyway. He finally gets it. Missed it. But Spoon on the follow-up is not there. And Atkins, who's a very unsayer for VCU, a very steady player with a rebound. Good job by D.C. Nothing there. Reset your offense. Good in sync. Atkins is a guy that was suspended for one game by the NCAA. Atkins has it now. And he puts it in. Of course, that was suspension, John, was because he had a couple of extra books uh, as, as a part of his scholarship, and he had to sit out of game. You can hardly hear that side of it, but uh, as soon as the VCU officials found out, they took the correct action and had a one-game suspension, which he's already served. And by the way, McCoy did a good job starting in his place. Haslett missed it at one end, and it was not a good shot by Mill. Well, we saw that play earlier with Warren, but uh, not nearly the same result. Got to travel there. Seven miss just appears to be a little bit out of sync. MK said, hey, if our guard play is not consistent, he said, one thing we did is we scheduled eight of our first 11 on the road, and we paid the price, and it's just tough to recover. He's got five of the last eight in here where they've played so well, six and one in this year. Three-point shooting, uh, Southern Miss have already launched 10 from three-point range to get, really to get the, the sights working. Southern Miss with the steal. Nice pass by Weatherspoon. Miss, though, inside. A tough shot, but yet Avery Thomas should have got that one down. You know what makes that so tough? The three guys that had their hands on it were all MK Turks players, and none of them could come up with a handle. Let's look at it again. This is a good break opportunity. Weatherspoon makes the correct decision. But unfortunately, nobody can come up with a handle. Let's watch it. Again, the guys that get their hands. Look, three Southern Mississippi players. They all cancel each other out. It goes out of bounds. And that makes number eight in terms of the turnover department. That's too much. Speaking of too much, Warren's been too much for the Golden Eagles here in the first half. He has 16 of them, John. He's making a strong case uh, for all the uh, uh, postseason uh, awards that uh, they're trying to get him. He's going to put that Warren report in gold letters. Going to reach in foul against VCU. Has Warren been really, really effective, especially around that basket, John? Watch it. No wasted motion. Nice job sealing off. Doesn't worry about it. Once he gets it, he knows what to do with it. Makes it look easy. He's a smooth player. If he can develop that 18-foot shot a little further in terms of range, he's going to be very tough to stop. That's the team fouls. Not much of a foul problem because we've got less than four minutes to go. That foul, by the way, was on Kendrick Warren, his first. Rembert from the corner. 
Rebound Fred Williams, another freshman in the lineup for MK Turk. And Warren once again didn't get the jam job. His timing was off a little bit. He's thrown a few shots I can remember him missing in the last five or six attempts. He has been very, very tough. Courtney with that little jump hook, too strong. And Warren comes up with a rebound, sitting on his can. And here's Mills against Courtney. Good head fake, and he drops it in. Nice play by Sharon Mills. Well, BCU's got a great opportunity to go to halftime with a double-digit lead on the road. If you're Southern Mississippi, you want to try to get it to four or five because you're playing at home. You should have the confidence to stay in the second half. Next three minutes going to be very interesting here, Don, to finish up this half. Graham lead is eight inside. Short by Williams. And again, Southern Miss losing it. And the Rams will have it. Well, it's been Kendrick Warren, but he has a strong supporting cast, John. Sharon, Sharon Mills here shows he can get it done, too. Well, everything under control. Watch the head fake. Courtney buys it, and he finishes up. That's a nice move all under control. Some of the young Southern Miss fans enjoying the game, but not too much because VCU with the lead and basketball tonight. Tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, Prime Network brings you live coverage of the 1992 Volvo Tennis of San Francisco. This year's field includes Jim Courier, Michael Chang, Brett Gilbert, and Jimmy Connors. Quarterfinal action on most Prime affiliates. Check your local listings. On the showdown, Warren's got 16 points, Weatherspoon with nine, but more importantly, Warren's club enjoying an eight-point lead on the road. There they got the offensive rebound, but McCoy lost sight of where he was and bounced it out of bounds off his foot. Look at that VCU shooting. Unbelievable. Well, good shot selection. I think that's the thing that's impressed me the most about Sonny Smith's club. I've really seen very few poor attempts. Everything's been pretty well a high percentage shot that they've taken. But he's a good shooting percentage. VCU certainly doesn't look like a team that's trying to snap a three-game losing streak. This is a team that they've been in most every single game, all but two games, and really had a legitimate chance to win in the last 10, 12 seconds. I mean, if you put yourself in that position, good things normally will happen for you. Southern Mississippi trying to solve the answer to the question that the defense VCU has put up there against them tonight. And the common denominator has got to be Clarence Weathers. We've got to get him involved in the offense somehow. Get his hands on the ball at the offensive end. Rembert misses the follow, but Courtney doesn't. He has eight points. That will raise your team's shooting percentage. Strong move inside for the senior Joe Courtney. He started the last seven games, and over that seven-game span has averaged nearly 11.7 rebounds. Straight man-to-man -man defense by Southern Mississippi. VCU leads it by six. We're under the minute and a half mark. All right, Warren and Weatherspoon are now going against each other man-to-man -man underneath. This is Warren with the ball against the Spoon. Spoon blocks it and chases it down. The senior against the sophomore. Southern Miss had it inside, brings it back out, and now Spoon with it on the offense to Courtney, blocked by Warren. And here comes the Ram break. Weldon all the way, rejected by Courtney, but put up and in on the follow-up by VCU, and it was Atkins that was there. Here's a guy, John, that you don't see much. He actually leads his team in assists, and he is, as we said earlier, an unsung hero. Well, Atkins does a nice job. Ordinarily, a block's going to turn things around, but good presence by Atkins, who's trailing the play. Presence of mind to come up with it. Hazlitt fouls him, and Atkins will get the bucket and a chance for the conventional three-point play. That's good hustle trailing the play. Atkins will go to the line looking for his ninth point. And again, the adventure from the free throw line for VCU. This cost them the earlier game where they're only 35%, 5 for 14 from the line in that earlier game in Richmond. Spoon has it knocked loose, and McCoy has the loose ball. And let's see if VCU will try to run some clock. I'll tell you what they did. They looked at the shot clock and give Brower credit. He pointed up at the shot clock and said, kick it out and run it down. They want to take, ideally, the last shot of the half. That's very good recognition because you've got a, an eight-point lead. You don't have to force a shot if you don't want to. That's the game clock. The shot clock is almost identical, about a half-second difference. Ideally, you want to put this up with about four or five seconds. Just enough time to get an offensive rebound, but not enough time for Southern Mississippi to get a quality shot off at their offensive end. That runs down now. There's the man you want to shoot it. 
Warren over Weatherspoon, short. Warren gets it back, lost it. Now he gets it, and McCoy tries to chase it down, but we have come to the end of the first half. Pretty much all VCU in the first half, and Southern Mississippi, John's going to have to make some adjustments at the half. Well, they never put together a big run in the first half. That's what they need to do in the second half. But FK Turks at home, he's in position. But in the first half, it's VCU, and we'll be back to Hattiesburg on Prime Network. Metro Action more coming in a moment. Welcome back to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. We're at halftime, 34-26 VCU with the lead against Southern Mississippi. And, John, you were talking in the uh, pregame about the runs. Uh, Southern Mississippi wanted to get them on offense, but it happened in this case. It happened to them on the defense. They, they were shut down by VCU. Well, in the last 7.07, believe it or not, they only scored two points, and that's a big reason why VCU enjoys an eight-point lead at the half. They will have to get their offense in sync in the second half, and they're still capable of putting those big runs because they're playing at home. You know, VCU is a team that's had some tough luck. We'll talk to Sonny Smith about that a little bit later in halftime. But I tell you, this is a team that doesn't look like it's lost three in a row. They're getting some great inside play, especially let's start and look at uh, Sharon Mills. Well, they certainly look confident, and Mills did have a good job. He's been a consistent player for them. The key, everything under control. Although he's 6'8", watch the head fake, keeps the feet together, gets the defense to commit, nice shot up and in. But the story of the first half for VCU, Kendrick Warren. He was all over high percentage shots like that. He was a man that the VCU, uh, it wasn't stoppable in the first half. Now, for USM on the other side, Clarence Weatherspoon, he had nine points in the first half, but they were quiet nine points, not the explosive nine that you can expect from Weatherspoon. But you can be assured that Clarence Weatherspoon will come out much more focused and that USM, Southern Mississippi, will give him the ball more so at the offensive end, give him some more attempts. I think Southern Mississippi saw in that loss to UNC Charlotte here last Saturday that they have to get the ball to Clarence Weatherspoon. I'm sure they're going to be working about that uh, during the halftime. Well, he's too good a player. When you got an All-American, you get him some shots. You live and die with the All-American, and ordinarily, you like your chances. But MK Turk, this club, they've got some experience there, and again, they're playing on. We're going to see a good game in the second half it's going to go down to the wire don't forget we'll have more college basketball here on prime network coming up next it'll be arizona state and california but yet we're here in hattiesburg mississippi at the intermission vcu 34 southern miss 26 metro conference action on prime And we're back at halftime in the Reed Green Coliseum in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, the game between VCU and Southern Miss. VCU, one of three new teams in the Metro Conference, along with South Florida and UNC Charlotte, and Coach Sonny Smith of VCU has joined us here at halftime. And Coach, first of all, let's talk about uh, how it feels with VCU and all the fans and the support of the administration about being a new member of the Metro Conference. Uh, our people are really excited about it, Don. The fans are excited. The players are excited. Everybody's excited. We can get a few more points we my play, I would be really excited <laughs> but it's really it's been an uplift for us our attendance has been more everything is better for us the Metro's good one of the things I think people probably didn't realize but certainly do now is the parity and balance particularly with the new additions of the uh, teams coming in right at the top of the list uh, is a new team UNC Charlotte there with Tulane there was no uh, so many starters returning and I think that made the difference with the new clubs coming in and I'm really impressed with what Florida uh, uh, the UNC Charlotte's done and what South Florida could do. I think they could be real dangerous in this for the new teams. But uh, the impressive thing about the standings is that Tulane and Charlotte's gone on the road and won twice. That's very difficult to do, and this is a tough league. One of the things talking about very difficult to do is to be a head basketball coach in Division I. You've now been a head coach for 17 years. You're in your third year at VCU. You've had a little bit of tough luck this year. You might be the best 9-8 and eight team in America. We mentioned you've had six of your eight losses by two points or less. How do you deal with that with a coach and your team? I tell you one thing. I just keep the straight jacket on the bus and put it on just because the game's over. You got to do more than that. <laughs> oh, it's been really <laughs> difficult. But I tell you what, the team is they've stuck in there, they practice hard, and they're still more they're still upbeat, and I think that some good something good's gotta come from this. It it just it can't keep going on like it has. 
One of the things I think in the Metro Conference that is so tough is always winning on the road. And you've created an environment there in Richmond. It's tough for your opponents to come in and win. Well, we've been uh, we, we've been playing very well at home. We just hadn't been able to put them away in the late stages. But we're really a young club, and I think we could get much better as we go along. I think a little bit of success would make that so, but I think we need some success. Something to help your success. This is a muck luck. They give you an Alaska. It's not a rabbit's foot. Uh, they say it's no luck, good luck. Uh, has it been bad luck? Maybe it'll help you, huh? Oh, man, bless your heart. I'll take anything. I've been rubbing chicken bones together. I've been doing everything. Anything to get a win, I'll take. What do you call it? A muck luck. Muck luck. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. And we'll be back with more halftime. After this, John Albright and I will take a look at the first half statistics in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Metro Conference Basketball on Prime Network. 34-26, VCU with the lead, John Albright, over Southern Mississippi at halftime. And uh, tell you some interesting things we'll look at in the statistics that I think will show the success of VCU and the problems that Southern Miss is dealing with. Well, it certainly showed up in terms of the percentage that both these teams shot. VCU on the road shot extremely well. And let's take a look at the first half stats. Look at the number of attempts, pretty close, but look at the percentage, a big disparity there. From the line, well, we talked about VCU needing to, to do well there, but that really wasn't a big factor for either team. Three-point shooting, Southern Mississippi just couldn't find a rebounding total. That was fairly close. Turnovers, Southern Mississippi got into double digits, and that's 10 potential possessions that they don't have an opportunity to score. When you're shooting poorly, you need all the percentage, all the shots that you can get. But Kendrick Warren, clearly the story in the first half for VCU. He had 16 points again in the earlier meeting. He only had 10. 8 of 14 in the first half. And when you get shots like that, they're going to be high percentage. Weatherspoon, that time a goaltending call, but he was an influence in the first half. Only 9 points, but you know that he's going to come back in the second half. He's too good a player. I look for him to pretty much put this team on his shoulders and try to get him out of here with a win. Of course, some of the leading scores in the ball game, we talked about Weatherspoon needing to lead the way, but VCU, first of all, riding the back of Warren, but getting pretty good support from the supporting cast. Well, lad, yeah, that's his 17th straight game in which he's hit at least 1-3, but they did get a, some good additional support for Warren. Southern Mississippi, well, Weatherspoon with 9, Courtney 8, but not a whole lot out of the backcourt, which puts too much pressure on the inside games. Defensively, you can stop one dimension. Tough to stop two. Well, VCU with the better of it here in the first half. Golden Eagles of Southern Miss trying to make some adjustments. We'll find out what happens when we come back in a moment. Welcome back to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Is that a relative of yours, John? He's working on a master's degree here. <laughs> yeah, and painting your face. By the way, uh, congratulations. A new addition to your family, by the way. Thank you very much. Let's get the statistics on it. Number three. So uh, we're happy. All right. We're at halftime. VCU leading Southern Mississippi. What about, John, uh, we talked about M.K. Turk. Some of the concerns he has. Let's look at the other end. Sonny Smith has to be pleased with the way his team played in the first half. Well, you just tell your team to go out and do the same thing you did in the first half, and you get out of here with a win. But I thought he did a, his team did a real good job in the first half with shot selection. One of the problems, particularly when you're struggling in games, you, you have a tendency to rush things. It's very difficult to be patient. This club did a very good job in terms of the shots they took, and they had a good percentage as a result. They never panicked. Everything looked to be under control. But I can assure you, the Clarence Weatherspoon in Southern Mississippi will make a run at this thing. Weatherspoon will be much more involved in the second half. When you got an All-American, you live and die with them, and that's exactly what the, that poster says. The SWAT team had a couple of gold tins, but you got a great idea of the athletic ability that this All-American has. Well, the SWAT team needs to be in full force, especially if they want to put the halt on Kendrick Warren. And as you saw, had 16 first-half points, and... Got it done at both ends of the floor, and VCU will have the first possession. Well, Courtney started off on him, and from a quickness standpoint, Warren just had too quick that first step and was able to get a shot off a couple of times early against him. Southern Mississippi's going to open up in man-to-man -man defense. They want to pick up the defensive pressure. It's a tempo going to their line. Now we got to have a holding foul against Southern Mississippi. I think Courtney was hanging on to Sharon Mills. Well, interesting. Right now, they, they played pretty much behind the offensive player in the first half. MK Turks troops coming out now fronting, challenging, contesting that entry pass. First foul on Courtney in the game, so on the common foul, it comes in. Mills with the running hook that's short. And Weatherspoon has the Southern Miss rebound, and the Golden Eagles looking for the early offense. 
Weatherspoon would like to get it down on the block because he's so difficult to handle right now, man to man and in low. But they had the alley oop there, they didn't look at it. So they miss, I'm sure, trying to get more movement in the offense. And that's what they need to do is get it to Weatherspoon because he will dust it off. Look where he got it, though. He got it on the block. He's too strong physically to stop him down long. The dunk corner, number three now in that category for the Golden Eagles. They had one for VCU. This guy, Kendrick Warren, would have a bushel full of them here in this game. 34-28, VCU. Warren given some room by Weatherspoon. Lost it momentarily, gets it back, and I think it would be a double dribble. It was. Let's watch Weatherspoon operating. We saw him just a minute ago defensively, but offensively he's got on track. He's now got 11. Watch him open. He's going to set the pick. Screen his man off. There's no way for Atkins to get back, and he makes him pay. But also, Don, I think interesting, the All-American now going to guard Kendrick Warren. That's now going to be a one-on-one -on -one struggle between those two. If you think they don't count on Clarence Weatherspoon, he's been the leading scorer in 15 of the 18 games for Southern Miss this year. Atkins is going to have a hard time staying with him man-to-man -man down low. Courtney, that's important that somebody else also takes a little pressure off of him by hitting. Well, if he can get that perimeter, that's just going to make it that much more difficult to double and triple team Weatherspoon inside. Courtney in double digits with 10. Ian Weatherspoon, the leading scores for Southern Mississippi. And it's a four-point game. Well, that's a good job by Weatherspoon defensively. An easy two. They'll get it over to Dale. Rembert took it into traffic, but scored anyway over Atkins. Looked like there was an easier route there for Rembert. He didn't choose to take it, but he got the results anyway. Sonny Smith doesn't like what he sees, so he wants and he gets a timeout. Defense, how important? Now, Weatherspoon, we talk about his offense. Well, he'll also play at the other end. Good anticipation by Weatherspoon, and that gets the break going. Rembert starts it, and Rembert's going to finish it. Three on one, Rembert finishes it off in fine fashion, and we got a two-point game. Okay. Welcome back to Hattiesburg. VCU leading it by two. Ground transportation for Prime Network production crew is provided in part by Dollar Rent-A-Car. Dollar Rent-A-Car is right on the airport, right on the money with over 1,300 worldwide locations. Call your travel agent or 1-800-800-4000 for reservations. Well, we promised a close game in the second half. Southern Miss has delivered their part two-point game right now. And it's been defense by Clarence Weatherspoon, not the offense. As he's going now man-to-man -man against Kendrick Warren. That's pretty interesting. You can challenge your All-American now to get down and dirty at the defensive end, and he responds. And he certainly has done that. Well, you've got a finesse player in Warren against a physical player in Weatherspoon, and Warren's going to have to cut out quick and bring him away from the basket like he's doing here to get a shot off. He uses his quickness right there, John, to take it to the basket and bank it in. Now, Warren uh, is not gonna, he's not going to concede anything to Clarence Weatherspoon, but it's going to be quickness against strength. You talk about the great instincts. We mentioned that on our first Prime Network telecast in the Metro with that VCU win over Louisville, and you can see that more and more when you see Kendrick Warren play. He's dangerous in terms of one-on-one -on -one skill. really presents a lot of problems for you defensively. And again, if he can develop a little more range offensively, he's going to have a whole package. Dale hasn't been much of a factor outside. Rembert has at times. That's a two-pointer. He was on the line. Rembert has 11. At the half-court trap again. We saw this once in the first half. Lad, the tray, and it's there. Now, that's a good job by VCU. They beat the pressure, and then they made Southern Mississippi pay. That's a good job by, first of all, recognizing it, and then go ahead and finishing it off. So the VCU lead back to five. 16 and a half minutes left on the Reed Coliseum. Clock here's a steal by Weldon. He has great quickness and puts it up. No, Haslett recovered and got the foul. I tell you what, you have two teams here, John, that really are almost interchangeable in position. They have great, great athletic ability. They're not afraid to go up and down the court. Let's watch the pick there by Weldon. Now it's a track meet. Haslett's going to come in, get in there just in time. Good move by Haslett. Stops the easy two points and Weldon will go to the line. I don't think VCU got any free throws in the first half. They were 0 for 3, so still looking for their first free throw to fall. That's something we talked about them having to do. They're 0 for 4 now. If you look at the end of the game, now that's four points. It's a, you know, at least two of those you'd hope uh, if your Sonny Smith would go in. 
50% when it won the first game between these two teams. Maybe he'll switch that muck muck from one pocket to the other. <laughs> first point in the game for Carl Walden. VCU now with full court man-to-man -man pressure. More token than anything else. Not aggressive, all out man-to-man -man denial. A six-point VCU lead. Courtney working against Mills. Warren had the rebound. Now he'll bring it down on the dribble, and somebody reached in. It might have been Weatherspoon. Haslett, I believe, will pick up the foul. Yep. But right. that's a good foul because that's a three-on-one break that VCU had at the other end, and that's a pretty high percentage transition. So pretty good foul by MK Church Club. You know, MK's really been concerned about Bernard Haslett because he's just been struggling with his shooting. He's a very conscientious young man and wants to help the team. You saw the reach in, and you saw VCU. They had the three-on-one opportunity, so that's a good foul by Haslett. And talking to Sonny Smith today, he said, you want to see a quick team? He said, try Texas on for size. Ladd out of the corner. There's another tray for Rod Ladd. That is his fourth of the game. Well, Southern Mississippi got it to two, and credit VCU. They answered the run. Now have extended back out to nine. And John, now VCU with the outside shooting has both the inside and outside going, and outside again is Ron Rippert for USM. That's right. You can't shut down both dimensions. You can shut down one, but you can't shut down the other. Another turnover for VCU. Mills gets to travel, so with 15-27 left, the Golden Eagles get the boss. Sonny Smith's club, though, has pretty much led from the get-go. Did a good job, and on the road, you want to play ahead. You don't want to get the crowd involved. Plus, from a confidence standpoint, you're always much more confident at home in front of your fans. Going to reset the shot clock. Of course, the three-point shots become who, who part else of the game. but UNC Charlotte yeah. leading the pack. These two clubs, well, about where they are in the standings, middle of the pack. Well, that's what happens in the standing. That's what's happened tonight from behind the arc. BCU, again, they've taken very good shots. Southern Miss still has to found the range, but they're a streaky club. They can run off the bench and hurt. Speaking of that, Terry Cameron gets his first points of the game, and it happens to be, yes, a three-pointer. Thank you, Terry. Right on cue. What do you know a little bit about this game? to watch it from the <laughs> sideline, unfortunately. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. You know the game very well. There's Sharon Mills. Mills has four points in the game. Got a good one going here in Hattiesburg. We really do. VCU's had the better of it, but Southern Mississippi is not a team that will give up easily. That's not a good shot by Rembert. Fall away three-pointer. Oh. Great play by Warren to Mills. He didn't get the shot, but that was a little thing that Kendrick Warren did that could have ended up helping his club in a big way. Don, he's done that a couple of times in this game. Somehow control the ball that seemingly looked to be going out of bounds. Weatherspoon on the run. Doesn't get the jumper, but does draw the VCU foul. Weldon reaching in, helping out. And it takes more than one person to... To slow down Clarence Weathers, but I don't think you can stop Spoon. He's just too strong at 6'7", very physical, very excellent leaper. And again, early in his career, he was a one-dimensional player, inside only. His junior and senior years, he has developed that perimeter shot to the point where he's very comfortable shooting the three-point shot. Just under 50% coming into this game from three-point range. The Metro Conference Player of the Year twice. Of course, a candidate to win that for the third time this year as well. Well, he's... He's a, in, a, in a rare uh, category in a couple of areas. He can join only Keith Lee in terms of rebounding leader all four years. Warren had it, lost it. Atkins tried to find it, and we're going to have a held ball. So the possession arrow pointing toward Southern Mississippi, as you see it. Now get the fans involved, and that's a good sign. Sonny Smith saying, calm down, slow down. We've got the lead. Don't rush it. And in the first half, they did a good job of it. Now, here's the full court pressure. Good job by Dale. Kicks it right back. Now they finally break the pressure. Nice kick over. Warren is still not comfortable with it. And the tie-up inside. Good hustle that time by Southern Mississippi. VCU looking for some confidence because they go from here to take on Tulane down in Fogelman on Saturday. Gee, what a break they get. Yeah. And that crazy band box. Courtney gets the follow-up, but they're going to get him for steps. That is not a popular call here in Hattiesburg. What gave you that idea? <laughs> Those guys right there. And that gentleman, M.K. Turk. What a job he's done here, though, John. You know, we were talking today, and he described it best by saying, 
this program, we've grown together in 16 years, and they've really done that. Just a class gentleman, M.K. Church. He's taken him to a couple of NCAAs, won an NIT championship, and you see VCU already had almost as many turnovers in this half as they had in the entire 20-minute first half. They've got to regain their composure. They can afford to be a little selective in terms of the offensive shots they take. They did such a good job in the first half. Now they got to do the same thing in the second half. Weatherspoon really getting all over Kendrick Warren, who finally gets free. Again, that quickness. And Warren hits the 20-point mark. Doubled uh, in this game what he did in the first game. And that's one of the big reasons why his team's got a five-point lead. And Weatherspoon right now. The two marquee players in the Metro are lighting it up in a big way. This is what you'd expect. As you get inside the 10-minute mark, you can expect that to even uh, magnify even more so in terms of Weatherspoon and Warren being the key guys for both these clubs. A little half-court trap this time by Southern Miss. And what this does, Don, it, it disorients your offense. You never really get a chance to set up. Big hit by Weldon. He penetrated like you need to, John, and he hit a key shot. Well, you can do it immediately before the trap gets to you. If you're going to penetrate, go ahead and do it before the double team comes to you. Dale looking for Weatherspoon. He's fronted by Atkins. Dale now to the baseline in all kinds of traffic, and they take it away. Weldon lead pass. McCoy chases it down, and he traveled with it. Once again, Sonny Smith applauding his team's effort, but encouraging their patience. Well, this is the little things that, uh, unfortunately, have had a big hand in those losses in the last couple of seconds. It comes down to execution. One team does, one team doesn't. And this has been a problem area for VCU all year long. 49-44 VCU. And it'll be a ram foul. It's going to be against Weldon for the reach-in. That is his third by my count, and it is. And now, quickly, Sonny Smith will come with Rod Ladd back into the lineup, and Weldon will go to the bench. Ladd offensive spark in the first half, where he was able to get a couple of threes off in tiny moments. So on the common foul, USM with the ball inside the spoon, blocked by Warren, but they get Warren on the foul, and you talk about a confrontation of two titans. <laughs> it's right here. Well, the two stars are going to collide underneath. Pass inside. This is going to be hard to stop. Although Warren does a good job. He didn't back down. Looked like a, a lot of leather. Apparently some body contact. But that impressed me. He didn't back down at all from Weatherspoon. Second foul on Kendrick Warren. And Weatherspoon, who's an outstanding free throw shooter, especially for a guy that's considered a big man, almost 75%. I think the greatest thing in MK Turk, I think, would say the same thing is the attitude that Weatherspoon has. Good players sometimes never become great players because they're not willing to work that little extra each year. He has, and it spills over to your teammates. If they see you working that hard, you're going to do a little extra yourself. Very seldom do you see the Spoon miss two free throws. You just did. So VCU with the five-point lead on the ball. Just under 12 minutes left in this one in Hattiesburg. Don Russell, John Albright, our fine prime network crew. Producer Ken Noah, director Mark Grant. And inside, we have a Clarence Weatherspoon foul. He reached in, trying to stop. Well, we saw it at the other end. It was Warren picking up the foul. This is an instant replay, except it's Kendrick Warren giving the pump fake. It's Weatherspoon to leave his feet. You won't see that very often, but a very fine offensive move that time by Kendrick Warren. Weatherspoon picking up the foul. And he misses. Well, Weatherspoon missed two at his end. Let's see if Warren returns the favor. Free throws again. This is starting to be going to be a big concern at the end of the game. And finally, Warren gets one down. He has 21 points. 49-44. VCU has been tough. They're trying to hang on here in Hattiesburg. VCU by six over Southern Miss here in Hattiesburg. Well, next Thursday night at 7.30, the Spoon is back as Clarence Weatherspoon and Southern Miss return to Prime Network, taking on the Hokies of Virginia Tech on most of your Prime Network affiliates. Check your local listings and 
BPI under the leadership of Bill Foster doing a good job, especially on the defensive end. Bill Foster in his second stint with a Metro member. He was the head coach at UNC Charlotte, and he's really the one that recruited all those players that went to the, the Final Four, eventually losing to the champion Marquette in the semifinal. Also was uh, starting up that Miami program. He's used to resurrecting programs. It's always tough to win in Blacksburg. One of the tougher places uh, in the Metro Conference when the students are right there. You've been there before, haven't you? They don't say very kind things about uh, reading your name off the back of your uniform, I can assure you, but a great atmosphere. Look at the second half shooting. Both teams lighting it up. This is field goal percentage. No, that's not free throws. Both teams struggling from that end, but very high percentages from the field. And this is the case where both teams have done better from the floor than the charity strike. We've seen a lot of inside play which is going to lend yourself to much higher percentage shots. Spoon from the outside. Yes! It's just amazing seeing him the first half of the last year. He's so comfortable with that medium range jump shot. Yeah, the maturity he's gained over the years. And again, as you mentioned and we talked about earlier, the fact that his work ethic is so, so good. And Spoon comes up with a steal. You wanted the offense, you got it. Now he comes up with a D. And there's Westby. You wonder why he was highly recruited. He's a great talent. And we got a two-point game again. Now the last time, Southern Mississippi started off with a 6-0 run, was able to get it to two, but VCU answered it and got it back to a nine-point game. It all starts at the defensive end. Nice anticipation by Weatherspoon. Now the transition coming right at you. You want to see a high percentage shot? Wisby's going to do it right there. We got a two-point game here in Hattiesburg. That's the first two in the game by Wisby. Courtney tries to come up with a steal, and instead gets a foul. And the thing you also got to wonder about now is if Southern Mississippi Don can take the lead, mentally, how does VCU react? Because pretty much most of this team, they've had it their way. They've played extremely well and have played in the lead. The Sonny Smith team has not had to play down. And in the back of your mind, those six of eight losses, two points or less, that's always moving in the back of your mind until you pull one out. Yeah, a win like that will change a lot of things for you. Atkins with it straight away will take the jump and hit it. Big basket by Eric Atkins, his first two and a half, but he has ten in the game. And very important for VCU to answer the run because you got to wonder then how many times can Southern pick. Mississippi go to the well? Dallas Dale, who leads the Metro in assist. Had a nice pass a moment ago to Wispy. Here's the Cameron three, no. And Wispy almost had the rebound, lost it. Got a foul. That's why he lost it. Sharon Mills with a push off. Is the third personal on Sharon Mills. That's the fourth team foul. Cameron will trigger it into Weatherspoon. 9.54 and counting the time left in regulation. 52-48 VCU. Let's see if Southern Mississippi clears out on the block and gets it to Weatherspoon. That's really the area where he's so dangerous inside because it also keeps him in rebounding position. Well, Cameron tried to dribble through traffic and fortunately for Southern Miss, they maintain possession, but Courtney misses the jumper badly. Good job by VCU. Slow it down a little bit. Get under control. Run your offense. Mills saw the opening after the steal attempt by Wispy, and Mills took advantage of it and takes it right to the hole. And look easy. He doesn't look nervous, does he? Real relaxed. He has six points in the game. VCU has been challenged by Southern Miss, but they always have been able to answer the call. Watch the hesitation by Mills. Near steal by Wisby. Very effortlessly. Makes it look easy. But two points for Mills. That's pretty good recognition. Nobody stops him. That's a kind of a surprise. You don't expect him to penetrate, much less put up the shot. Team foul. Well, that's pretty close. Seven now puts you in the one and one. So inside nine minutes to go, these teams are going to have to go to the free throw line and answer. Weldon back in for VCU. Partially blocked on that shot. Wispy tries. It was Weatherspoon. Yes. You can hit five feet from the bucket. Inch for inch. He's as tough a guy to stop as you're going to want to see anywhere in the nation. There are taller players. The one that means like Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, it's a little more devastating, but he's also a seven-footer. 
Lance Weatherspoon has done so much for this Southern Mississippi program and really for Metro Conference basketball. Mills got it in despite the fact the Spoon got a hand on it. Certainly did. Both teams answering each other. We'll see which one's going to flinch first. Both teams have done a good job coming up with baskets when they really needed it at timely areas in this game. Got a foul inside. Yeah, Witherspoon was getting ready to pull the trigger, but he will not get that opportunity because I believe they're going to... Courtney, that's a tough call. That takes it out of your offensive hands. No opportunity to score. Now the next team foul on Southern Mississippi will put Sonny Smith's VCU club at the free throw line, which has been an adventure all night long for them. I'm not sure he wants to get to the bonus. It would be better to take it out of bounds the way his team shot the freebies tonight. But they're going to have to hit free throws if they want to get out of here with a win. Brower, big three-pointer. Brower was on the bench momentarily, pops right back in, and he's one of the old-timers that likes to pull up those socks. Well, you're either a trend or trend follower. I guess Mr. Brower is uh, rolling back the hands of time a little bit. There's the great Kelly Pupa was known for the uh, high socks. Brower's got a different haircut than when we saw him last, too. Kendrick Warren uh, battling inside. He, he got the personal foul. We'll be back to Hattiesburg in a moment. VCU by now. Persistence will normally pay off, and at the offensive end, that usually means two points. Watch Southern Mississippi keeping it alive, getting hands on it once, twice, and finally, the third time is the one that does it for Weatherspoon. Role players need to come in and do their job. Brower's the three-point shooter, his first shot of the night, right on the money for VCU. And he hit that jumper, as you can see from that replay, with the Dallas Dale hand right at his face. Weatherspoon definitely been a factor here in the second half. He had nine at the break. Warren had 16 at the break, so the second half has been Weatherspoon's. This nine-point lead, the largest enjoyed in the game by VCU. This is a trip now that Southern Mississippi really needs a bucket. Here walk that time. Wispy didn't get it. Courtney kept it alive. Courtney fighting, and in the process of trying to go it up, he picks up a foul from VCU. Courtney is an interesting story. He's a journalism advertising major. What that means is he takes his artist easel and all that stuff right on the road with him. You're going to have thick skins to go against the stereotype, and uh, you got to like that. Uh, Joe Courtney, the senior, wants to pursue uh, something in the journalism advertising field. I like that. Be a trendsetter. Well, he can write the copy about having a nice touch at the free throw line because that one hit the back of the iron, went straight up and down through. And here's Stan Pepeleas. Glad you said it. We'll go right on that. 7-2, junior. First Russian citizen to play college basketball in a U.S. team. Courtney, one out of two. Actually, of course, now I guess he would say he's from the Commonwealth of Independent States, right? Well, we had him in the Louisville game uh, at uh, D.C. In the first half, he influenced a couple of shots for a couple of minutes, and that's just to get a breather. He's not going to be in there down the stretch run. And also because Sharon Mills has four personal fouls, Brower almost got the benefit of the roll on a three-pointer, so he'll try again and nail it. How about two for a quarter? Two for three for Mr. Brower. And we've got him the biggest lead of the night for VCU, 11 points. Now you really got to put it in Weatherspoon's hands down low and take your chances with him. Dale, long three-pointer, and he hits it. You know, Dallas is, gets his first points of the game right there, and he has to be at least a threat to score. Again, that's all that perimeter. You've got to have a balance. Now, if you're VCU, you don't have to score quickly. Take some good shots. That time, they finally get it the second time around. Tyrone McCoy, the talented freshman out of Bethune, South Carolina, who was a prolific scorer in high school, and has really adapted to his role here as a freshman coming off the bench. It's hard to come off uh, the high school ranks and immediately be a big impact player. It's a good bucket. That Southern Mississippi's got to have that. Wisby provides it. We've got full court pressure now. This created some problems for VCU in the first Near steal by Wispy. McCoy now with the numbers. Takes it up over Dale. Missed the bank. Kept a left. Didn't get it. And finally, Wispy in for the rebound. And he's fouled, I think, by the big seven-footer. Nope, they're going to put it against Bauer. Let's take a look at it. McCoy coming right at it over Dale. Looks like a pretty good shot. Doesn't get the roll. Stan keeps it alive. 
And finally, the foul inside on McCoy. Sixty-four fifty-six here, but don't forget, coming up next on most of these Prime Network affiliates, it's Arizona State and the California Golden Bears in Pac-10 action. That should be a good one. And we got a good one going on here, and it's VCU, the road All team. Right. A lane violation. Pepe Lev stepped in the lane before the shot was released. And this is where inexperience comes into to play. Stepped in too soon, so Wisby will get another chance. And he makes the most of it. That hurts because that would have been a missed free throw. So you're looking at one or two, one of two that you make. Actually, that would have been a one and one, so he would not have had any further attempts. And he makes it pay. Full court pressure now, again, by Southern Mississippi. Five minutes, 52 seconds left in this one in Hattiesburg. And Kendrick Warren helps out against the press and almost threw it away, but chases it back down. A little too lackadaisical. Can't relax at all against pressure. Good move. Good move by BCU. Get in your offense now. You don't have to stall it per se. You can just run your offense over and over until you get a good shot. It's hard to change gears, Don. If you go to the pure stall, the deep freeze, sometimes if you've got to really resurrect your offense, you never can. Right, that's two mistakes by Pepelev. And he's not used to being in that situation. That's a good move by Sonny Smith. He wants him to know, hey, I'm still behind you. McCoy's going to check back in, and you know who it's probably for. Yeah, well, this is not a game for a guy that's a little bit slow of foot either. Cameron for three. Weldon gets a flat-footed rebound and comes out on the run with it. Good job. Now kick it back out and restart your offense. You don't have to force a shot. Use some of that 45-second shot clock now if you're VCU. 64-58 VCU. We're under the five-minute mark in this one. It's going to come down throws and we talked about that we talked about it numerous times Weatherspoon didn't like the call but Warren will go to the free throw line well, Sonny Smith went to the Soviet Union looking for a seven footer it wasn't Pepe Lamp. he ended up bringing him back though watch his feet he got hooked up he switched him and that's the, the traveling call now they reach in by Spoon Let's take a look at it. Maybe he got with the off arm. He got with the right hand. Looked like he may have been holding on the left arm. And that's what Warren and VCU is going to have to do. They must go to the free throw line now and convert. Kendrick Warren is already above his 21-point average. He has 22. Sophomore out of Thomas Jefferson High School in Richmond, Virginia. Atkins a big rebound and he kicks it back out. A seven-point lead with 440 left. away. Rimmed it. That's a shot you don't have to take, though, Don. Again, less than 10 seconds off the 45 second shot clock. That plays right into Southern Mississippi's hands. Southern Miss obviously has to have possession of the ball. Weldon knocks it loose from Dale, but can't chase it down, so Southern Miss will get it back. Well, what do you think this Metro tournament's going to be like, Phil? You talk about great balance and the fact that it's in Louisville's Freedom Hall. You'll see it first day action on Prime Network. It should be really exciting. Well, first of all, you got a great atmosphere in terms of Freedom Hall, one of the best places to play college basketball. Unless you're from an opposing team, not real friendly, but it's a good atmosphere. Very knowledgeable fans in Freedom Hall in the Louisville area. Well, one rebound foul in one in, and now we get Joe Courtney for his fourth for Southern Mississippi. And we have a timeout. 4-16 is what we have left in Hattiesburg. VCU, the better of This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted to Prime Network by the Metro Conference and is not intended for the commercial use of our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast? Reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of Prime Network and the Metro Conference is prohibited. And Southern Miss looking for some rally from the fans here, and they're going to have to get it together quickly. Well, 4.16 to go. Still enough time, seven points, in particular with a three-point shot in college basketball. Plenty of time for Southern Mississippi to stay in it. Free throw shooting, we talked about at the top of the game, it was going to be important. It's really going to be critical now for VCU to step up to the line. 
They're only three of nine from the line so far in the game. They were five of 14 in the first meeting between these two teams. They must step to the free throw line and nail these free throw opportunities. Warren doesn't get it. McCoy kept it alive, but Weatherspoon tries to save it, but can't. I know it'll second to trade opportunity that, that BCU has missed, but they've come up with the ball afterwards. So very fortunate. You see the timeouts, both teams with a couple. And I think what also has helped BCU's woes at the free throw line is the fact that Southern Mississippi has not had that many opportunities as well. A good free throw shooting team. They're making them work for it from the floor. Good aggressive man-to-man -man defense now by Southern Mississippi. You see the game clock in your lower right-hand corner. Still plenty of time. Bauer. It's a good four. sequence right now by BCU. Very patient, under control, running some shot clock off. Bauer missed it, but McCoy chases it down, so they get a fresh 45. A good drive by Warren. Don't need to force a shot. If the layup's there, go ahead and take it again. You still got to keep your offense somewhat in track. You don't want to hit the deep freeze too early. Right now, good movement by BCU. Not allowing the defense any opportunity to double team right now, Don. Look at the movement, pick screens. Southern Miss doing a good job on defense there, there, step for step, too. I think you don't want to do for Southern Mississippi now. It's about the shot clock to go all the way down. Ten foul. Now you got to play straight up defense. No foul from here on in. Shot clock under ten. Weldon passes it off, and a big basket by Atkins, and a nice heads-up play by Weldon. That is excellent execution by VCU that last trip. And they've got a nine-point game again. So Southern Mississippi needs something positive to happen quick. Wispy starts to take it up, and he's fouled by Orn. Good movement by VCU just a moment ago, and they got an easy basket out of it, John. They really well, they did. executed the entire 45-second shot clock. Now we're inside 10. Good move by Weldon. Kicks it over to Atkins. He finally comes up with it and gets the bucket. Good execution. They run some time off the clock, and they extend their lead to 9. 2.45 left. VCU 67-58. Southern Miss need to do? Oh, you got to get Weatherspoon involved. You don't have to shoot all threes at this point. It's not panic time in terms of necessity having to have the three, but I do think you want to get it inside where you have a, a high percentage shot, and then you got Spoon around there for the offensive rebound. But more importantly, it puts you in an aggressive mode. You get the bucket, then you have the opportunity to jump immediately into full court pressure. Well, MK Turks Club not out of it, and I guarantee you Sonny Smith not in the easy chair. Big miss, though, at the free throw line, but Southern Miss gets the rebound. Wispy missed the front end of the one-and-one. One. Both teams coming up with offensive rebounds off missed free throws. Can't allow that to happen. Now That's, the... good... That's what you want. That's... Yep. He's too tough down low. Oh Although, ideally, you want to see him shooting going towards the bucket rather than the fadeaway. But Warren... Up the that's, a, that's a big point. 2.31 to go in the game, and Warren's now going to have to sit down. He's got 22 points. He had 16 of those in the first half, so only six in the second half. Let's take a look at it. You got a double team down low. Not a whole lot of. He got caught in between. Not a lot of contact. But that's the fifth foul. And Kendrick Warren, unfortunately, if you're a VCU follower, going to spend the rest of this game in a observation mode. Clarence Weatherspoon rattles out the free throw. That scar on his right cheek we just saw, John, he suffered in the Louisville win. Matter of fact, he left that game and didn't come back until the very end. And they won the game pretty much without his presence. And we get a Cameron foul for Southern Mississippi. But he is a true warrior. There you see a good look at that scar. We saw that happen when he banged his head on the floor. I think there were about five minutes left in that game. He left, needed stitches after the game, came back, but the team really got an emotional lift when he went out. They almost need the same thing tonight without the injury causing him to go to the bench. Well, they've got a nine-point lead. Can't go in the free throw line. They must hit some free throws. Now a ten-point lead with 2.28 to go. This starts to put it in the category now for Southern Mississippi where there's really no margin for error at the offensive end. They've got to convert each trip down. 
Mills hits a couple of big free throws. He was a guy that pulled up the slack, if you remember, in that game uh, against Louisville that VCU won to open our Metro Conference coverage on Prime Network. But don't think this is over yet. Now, Sonny Smith's getting everybody out. He doesn't want full court pressure. There's no reason because you might pick up a foul that stops the clock. That's a good job by Sonny Smith. He said, hey, guys, we're, we're in the lead. We don't want to pressure right now. Of course, he had 11 successful years at Auburn in the SEC. Twice his name, the SEC Coach of the Year, took him to the NCAA in four of his last five seasons in the plains of Auburn, Alabama. Cameron tried to get it down to Courtney and threw it away. Southern Miss has really been out of sync. And I think a lot of the credit goes to the good defense by VCU against MK Turks Club. A good, good job of making it difficult to get it inside the spoon. McCoy blocked away by Courtney out of bounds. That's a big block inside two minutes to go now. If that goes down, that makes it a 13-point game, and that's going to make it pretty difficult. That puts a lot of pressure on having to hit the threes. Now you got to think about fouling, going for the steal and putting some people at the free throw line to convert. This is McCoy, now to Bauer. Not the guy you want to put up there. He just hit two a, a, a couple of seconds ago. And that's the guy that's fouled. The action has been hot and heavy underneath the hoop tonight, John. It really has. Pretty good defensive reaction. Courtney slides over and makes sure Mr. McCoy doesn't get an uncontested layup. Again, PCU just must hit some free throws. Again, if you're just 50%, which is well below the standard that you ordinarily would want to see, which is close to 70%, if you're Sonny Smith, 50% gets him a win here. Anything less, and uh, he gets in that uh, twilight area that cost him the game earlier in Richmond. Missed both that time. He did. Minute 43 left, 69-58. VCU Weatherspoon didn't get it, gets his own miss. But it's Courtney that flips it up and gets the bounce. And a timeout, Southern Mississippi. Courtney caught something right in the eye or in the jaw. Now you see him kneeling at the free throw line. But he'll have some time to recover. With a minute and 33 seconds left at this one in Hattiesburg. Well, a nine-point deficit, so that's three possessions in a best-case scenario. Let's look at the action inside. Good aggressive rebounding by Southern Mississippi. Let's see if it happens right. It looked like it happened before that, and he had to press his mind to watch it, make sure it went in. Let's look at it inside. I think did it, almost looked like Atkins may have reached out and gotten him with his left arm. Now, see, he waited to see if the ball went in, and then he said, wait a minute, I got popped right in the eye, so he stuck with it. Doesn't look like it's anything very serious. Southern Mississippi... Uh, doctor attending to Joe Courtney. But again, Don, nine points, a minute 33 to go. That's, that's three possessions with a three-point shot. And the way VCU is going to the free throw line, we can see a, any number of different combinations before this thing's all done. Our game reset pretty much says everything right there. Graphically, that was the final timeout for USF. Well, that also means the fouls. Both teams will be shooting two free throws from here on out. So it takes a lot of the pressure off having to hit the one-and-one. One. As a player going to the line in the last couple of minutes here are a little extra pressure having to hit the front end now that pressure is removed it's much easier going to the line to shoot two free throws so vcu should have a little of the pressure removed going to the line well sonny smith has his muck luck and his rabbit's foot but his team also had a five point lead with a minute 30 left in richmond a couple of weeks ago and they lost that game on that buzzer beater by ron rember Here's Sonny Smith. Where is Ron Rimbert? Make sure he doesn't get the ball going down the stretch. Full court pressure. And the foul. You know, John, in the first game, we talked about some things about the free throw shooting for VCU that the overall statistics, you remember Denny Crum pointed out to us, were a little bit misleading in that that overall percentage was low, but that's because Warren had been horrendous at the free throw line, but really outside of Warren and Atkins, you've got 76%, 72%, 68%, not bad. Well, the percentages are true. Bill should step to the line and hit it. However, that free throw jinx continues for Sonny Smith. He's missed three in a row, Mills has. If they hit their free throws, this game isn't even close. Oh, no, yeah. they're, they're thinking about going to Fogelman Arena. I don't guess you want to think about that too early, right? The Fox Club has not been very kind to visitors this year in Fogelman Arena. A 
terrific shot by Dallas Dale. Yep, he nails the three. Southern Miss is out of timeout, so they can't stop the clock, but they immediately foul. That's a good shot and a quick foul. That's exactly how you want to diagram it. Well, we'll see if Southern Miss can get back on the winning track if they don't come back in this one, and they'll be taking on the Hokies of Virginia Tech. I think that's an underrated Virginia Tech club, though. They're going to surprise somebody before it's all said and done. Bill Foster is going to do a good job there for this thing's over with. Well, you know, we got to spend some time with M.K. Turk today, and what a job he's done. We've mentioned his 16 years and the job that he's done, not only with building this program to be a winner, but he's recruiting the talent in this area. And believe me, he doesn't need to go to the Midwest or the West Coast to find players down here, believe me. Keeps him up most uh, at home in terms of the state of Mississippi players. Robert McInnes, longtime assistant uh, with him. The free throw and a big one indeed. He has seven points. Makes one out to McCoy with a terrific rebound and he rolls it in. And that could be the backbreaker. That's tough to overcome. We talked about offensive rebounds off the free throws. You can't give that up. Here's a breakaway. This should do it. Atkins. And he dusts it off. Atkins with 14 in the game and VCU. A 12-point lead, their largest of the game. There's a three-pointer by Cameron, and he draws the foul from Mills. That's one thing, John, you don't want to do. Make them take a three-pointer, obviously, but don't foul him now. Dale's going to have, or Cameron's going to have a chance at a four-point play, and Mills is gone. Oh, that the clock stopped also. That's a huge momentum shifter. <laughs> you could see Sonny Smith, the puzzle, but... Uh, that just drives you crazy. There's no reason to even contest that three-point shot that far out. Well, it's been a fun night for VCU. They've been able to get some easy baskets at times. That was the play that just occurred a moment ago when Cameron was fouled was exactly what happened in Richmond that turned that game around when VCU at the end when Ron Redbird hit the three-pointer. So that's a four-point play for Cameron. And it's an eight-point game with less than a minute to go. Well, 55 seconds to go. Still enough time, but again, not a whole lot of margin for error. Actually, no margin for error if you're Southern Mississippi. If you go to the free throw line, BC, this game is over with. I just got to go to the line and convert. Ashlett got the foul. They really been concerned about Bernard because after that outstanding year last year, they said he's far-sighted. They tried glasses, contacts, goggles, and now they've gone back to say, hey, just play like you did last year. Big free throw make there by Rod Ladd. Outstanding sophomore from Montezuma, Georgia. And he grew up a lot last year, John, when he came in for Weldon. Now, where is Montezuma, Georgia? A trivia question on that. Ladd came up with the ball. That time, Rembert put it right out in front of the talented sophomore, and Sonny Smith has to like the way his club has really taken it to MK Turk's team here on the road. This is impressive. You knew it was a matter of time before finally the Prakes ended up going VCU and Sonny Smith's way. It looks like they're going to get out of here with a win, which will get their Metro Conference record up to 500 at 3-3, three and three. also put a 10-8 on the season. They still got an opportunity to get themselves possibly in an NIT berth or a stretch run, uh, uh, probably remote to get to the NCAA tournament. But they could still be a spoiler. This team, again, could have been 15-2 if all the breaks would have gone their way. Well, they've made their own breaks tonight. 17 points for Rod Ladd. He's had an outstanding game. Dale, a long three. Nothing but glass. And Ladd gets the rebound, and he's pushed from behind by Haslett. We'll take you to the Pac-10 next on Prime Network. Most of these affiliates, you'll see ASU, Arizona State, the Sun Devils taking on the California Golden Bears next on most Prime Network affiliates. Sonny Smith's club in the midst of a four-game road stretch. Three of those four being Metro Conference foes. This is a great way to get it started. This is the first of that four-game trip as we mentioned earlier he's got to go from here just a short uh, couple hour drive up to Tulane which will not be a friendly Fogelman Arena. They've sold out Fogelman for the rest of the year of course it only seats about 3,800. 
That is a, a very active and involved 3800. I tell you, I said a couple of years ago, it could be the most dreaded place in the country to play eventually. Cameron with the three-pointer. No, Weatherspoon gets the follow. They can't stop the clock. The spoon with 21, but it's going to be a little bit too little too late. McCoy tries to jam, and he's fouled by Cameron. Not a whole lot that uh, Terry Cameron could do. you got to stop it when on the free throw line. But this is uh, 24 seconds to go. VCU is going to get out of here with a win. Even up their Metro Conference record. This has got to be a confidence builder. We talked earlier, when you lose as many close games, two points or less as they've done, we've talked about numerous times, it becomes a psychological block in the back of your mind. When you get that at crunch time, you're just wondering, instead of how are we going to win it, how are we going to lose it this time? You finally got to snap out of it by doing one thing, getting a win. MK Turks Club, well, they're still a talented team. You've got a Clarence Weatherspoon, uh, you've got a Joe Courtney uh, and company. They are going to still uh, probably ruin somebody else's season before it's all said and done in the Metro. McCoy putting a couple of more nails in the coffin. This three-pointer rims out. Weatherspoon tips it in. 23 in the game for Weatherspoon, so he takes over game honors, but he would gladly trade it for a win. Dale for the three. He has nine all in the second half, but that will do it. VCU, finally, Sonny Smith can get out of the straight jackets. He doesn't need it anymore. It's going to be a little easier uh, bus trip uh, down to Tulane uh, with a win here. 82-74, Sonny Smith and VCU wins it here in Hattiesburg against the Golden Eagles. Back in a moment. 